President Trump, meanwhile, comforting survivors and thanking first responders in Las Vegas. And my next guest was with him on that trip, Nevada Congressman Mark Amaday, with me live in Capitol Hill. Sir, good morning to you, and thank you for your time. We just want to get a sense of the conversation you had with the president um, in light of what we're trying to absorb in Las Vegas. Yeah, Bill. Um, very engaged. Uh very focused in terms of uh, all the issues regarding that. Obviously, he talked with the first responders and the victims, uh, engaged on taking a look at what the administrative uh, issues were surrounding the promulgation of the bump stock stuff. So I think you'll, you'll see those folks uh, engaged on that shortly. And uh, just very, very touched, I think he was, by the warmth and appreciation that he was shown uh, in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, what, what does it mean to that community to get a visit like that? You know, uh, b being from Nevada, we don't get a lot of things like that, and I can tell you that uh, it was uh, it was pretty attention getting to see the people on the streets, and the warmth from the mayor and the sheriff, obviously, and and, I, and I'm talking about sincere stuff, not political, uh, uh, you know, snapshot things like that. And so, they made a heck of an impression on him, and he's with them. Yeah. On the investigation front, I is there more that you're getting from local authorities? That, that we haven't heard about yet that would lead us in a direction, sir? You know, n not yet. Um, I mean, you go down the first few uh, avenues and, you know, you've talked to, to his, uh, his girlfriend. They're looking at stuff related to other targets in the area. But, but quite frankly, at this point in time, I think it's still accurate to say, looks like it was just him trying to figure out what made him go where he, where he went. Mm. You mentioned the bump stock there. Did the president give you an opinion from him as to whether or not he would nudge Congress or even push Congress on it? Well, the president didn't give me his opinion. I can tell you, though, that the president's staff was very deep into the issue, confirming what the history of how this came about was, because it was administratively. Um, and so they are doing their homework, and I suspect uh, uh, have taken and are continuing to take a very deep dive in the issue. I think they've been in discussions with other interest groups uh, on both sides, which would include the NRA. So, you know, while, while a lot of people have said, hey, we need to be a little bit uh, uh, considerate of those folks who are victims here in a timing sense, I think you'll see the timing on this administratively and probably even congressionally be uh, be something that is unusual based on, well, on the so past. If this came for a vote, would you, on this accessory, would you vote to, to ban it or not? Well, it's, it's like everything else, Bill. It's like, well, show me the bill and I'll tell you. I've looked at David Cicilline's bill, which, which is great in terms of saying, hey, you know, we, we think this ought to be illegal and that ought to be illegal. The problem is, is then there's about five lines late, uh, right after that in the bill that go through a very broad description, which could mean anything from grips so to magazines need, to yeah, whatever. You need to see the language of what you're saying. Correct. That debate continues. Sir, thank you for your time. I'm out of time for now, but come on back, okay? And my best to you and all your constituents.